don't do that. Um, a good three-point mold for most dorsally angulated fractures with pressure applied at those three points that you see on the arrows. Um, so that's the correlative x-ray right there. So that's where you want the, the three points applied. And here you can see three points being applied. And one little trick if you're by yourself, I've got my foot in a little stirrup uh, pulling uh, downward traction on the arm, and my left knee is pushing the, the third point um, against the back of the splint there. So if you don't have any help, this is one way to do three points by yourself. Two points really doesn't do the trick. You really need three points, two points on either side of the fracture. Do not hyperflex the wrist um, when you're doing this. This does not help to reduce the fracture and you will hurt the patient. You'll cause CRPS, you'll cause carpal tunnel syndrome. You just want volarly translated force. You don't want to hyperflex the wrist. Um, that, that historically is called the cotton loader position. Um, it has nothing to do with loading cotton on a truck. It's actually one doctor's name, Dr. Cotton Loader. Um, and get uh, post-reduction x-rays. Um, always check to see what your, uh, your result is. Fractures that aren't worth reducing. If you have a volar Barton fracture like we showed before, a die punch injury, a chauffeur fracture, those, those might temporarily pull out to length, but they're going to slide right back. So um, when in doubt, certainly apply traction and put a splint on, but you don't necessarily need to do a reduction maneuver per se for those particular fracture patterns. Other reasons to do a closed reduction. It decreases swelling, it decreases pain, there's less risk of skin tenting from fracture fragments. You get post-reduction x-rays, you get better understanding, understanding of the fracture characteristics. There's less risk of carpal tunnel syndrome, and they might not follow up, right? So you want to do the best reduction you can.